Greetings, folks. Welcome to Virtual Realms. I'm Ranger One, and holy smokes, I need to make a pair of scissors. I'm still getting used to the new hairstyle and beard options. Eh, we'll take care of that a little later. Right now, I want to get into the next episode of my Arc Evolution series, where we focus on various mods and building showcases. And today, we're going to focus on a mod that I have made extensive use of for a long period of time. The Bridge Mod for Arc Survival Evolved. You can find it in Arc's section of the Steam Workshop, and I'll provide a link to it in the down below. Bridges of various types are often needed in my building projects, and I'm sure that holds true for many of you as well. They can be time-consuming and difficult to arrange properly with the rest of your build, and need a large number of supports to span any significant distance, which can be somewhat difficult and unsightly. The bridge mod simplifies that process considerably. It consists of several types of bridges ready to drop into place and adjust to your specific needs. Let's take a few minutes and I'll give you a quick overview of how this mod works and what the finished product can look like. To start off, I'm going to grab one of the more interesting types of bridges available, the standard hanging wooden bridge. Now this one I can put in place anywhere, it doesn't really have to snap to anything, and we'll line it up, and with a click we'll put it in place right at the very edge of this shallow pool. Now as you can see, this particular bridge hangs down in the middle, so it's not the best choice to put on flat ground like this. I started out with this particular bridge in this spot to show you that you do need to make a conscious decision as to which bridge you choose depending on the situation. Obviously, this bridge isn't the best choice for this location at ground level. Let's pick it up and move it into my main area and show you what it's really intended for. Now, this is more like it. In the small central pool of my compound, I have two cliffs that face each other over the expanse of the pool. I'm going to move it into position here. That looks just about right. Look out, Rocky. And click it into position. All right, now that's just about perfect, or at least one would think it looks perfect, except for the fact that it's a little too short. Well, fortunately, that's easily adjusted. Another problem we're going to have to deal with is the fact that one of the cliffs is taller than the other. That's going to be a little trickier, but probably not for the reasons that you might think. Let's go ahead and bring up the adjustment menu. From here, we can change any number of parameters for the bridge. We can raise or lower the other end of the bridge by using the rotate functions. We can make the bridge overall smaller or bigger. We can save the bridge size that we've currently worked with or reset it, demolish it, pick it up, and toggle between making major adjustments or minor ones. We'll leave it on major adjustments and just simply increase the size to begin with. One thing that is important to remember when you're adjusting the size of the bridge, it adjusts everything about the size of the bridge. Not only its length, but also its overall width and bulkiness. In bridges that have rails, that also increases the height of the rails to either side, which can be kind of handy if you need a, a little bit more insurance that you're not going to be able to walk off the edge with a particular mount. I'm going to make some minor adjustments now and kind of fine-tune its size to get it where I need it to be, roughly speaking. While I'm doing that, I want to mention something that I'm sure a few of the more astute viewers are going to point out. Wildcard announced some time ago that they were going to bring adjustable size bridges to ARC. And that's a great thing. It'll be interesting to see what they do with it and what kind of variations there are available but they keep delaying its release, which can be a little frustrating for us. So this mod, I'm hoping, is something you'll find handy in the meantime. Okay, now that we have the length of the bridge just about correct, let's go ahead and see if we can tilt it up to where it needs to be. We'll make small adjustments a little bit at a time. Major adjustments in this situation would put it up way too far, way too fast. That's just about got it up a little bit higher. 
And one more ought to do it. Oh, not quite. Well, that would work, but we'd have to jump up at the end. Oh, and now we see there is a slight problem. Even the minor adjustments have moved this end of the bridge up high enough that I would have to take a small hop to actually get on the bridge and walk across it. Well, that's a bit of a problem. I can fiddle with it as much as I want right now, but it's still going to be either slightly too high or slightly too low. Now, I've learned the hard way that occasionally you'll get a bridge pretty much where you want it and then decide when you get everything in place that maybe you'd have been better off starting from the other end. And this is one of those situations. Fortunately, with the bridge mod, it's child's play to save the bridge settings and start from the other end without losing much time at all. Okay, now we have it at the other end. And it's a little bit off, but I think we can work with this. I'm going to make a few minor adjustments as far as the length of the bridge. Shorten it down a little bit. Toggle very minor adjustments on and off for the actual angle of the bridge. And before you know it, we end up with an almost perfect fit at both ends. I think that looks pretty good. I could have put foundations down to completely square it up, but it really wasn't necessary in this case. Now, if you've ever tried to build a bridge in arc like this from scratch, you know that can eat up a lot of time. But this only took a couple of minutes. And in my opinion, the end result looks great, giving me a rustic, handmade-looking hanging bridge across this end of the pool. Obviously, this saves me from having to go all the way around or taking a brief swim every time I wanted to get from one side to the other. But wait, there's more! Every one of the bridges that comes available in this mod has a ramped version also, meaning there's a ramp built into the bridge model at either end. Now, I could have gone with this bridge, but I didn't really need it to be quite that high, and I thought it looked a little awkward. So we're going to pick it up, and we're going to move it back over to the original location, where the terrain is better suited to this particular style of bridge. Now, this is the situation where those ramps really come in handy. Since both banks of this pool are at ground level, these ramps give me the elevation that I really needed to get up and over it and still look correct. With a few adjustments to size, I could also easily have made this bridge capable of forming a pathway up and over this pesky outcropping of rocks to the left. Well, I'm sure you get the point. This mod is incredibly handy. But let's wrap this up by taking a look at some of the different styles of bridges that are available and how to tackle some of your bigger bridge building projects. Now let's say we want to build a bridge for my observatory deck here, all the way over to that bluff on the far side. We could use the hanging bridge that we've just been playing with, but by the time we sized it up to get all the way over there, it would be monstrously huge, and frankly, I don't think it would look that good anyway. So let's take a look at some of the other styles that are available and see what fits the bill. Here are the three other styles of bridges available. All of them are available in ramped versions as well, but we're not going to use them for this particular project. There's metal, wood, and stone. Pretty basic, but they all look good. Of course, they all have the same basic adjustments that you can make with the standard hanging bridge we looked at earlier. But you'll notice there are a couple of other options as well. Toggle rails is one that you'll probably find some use for. You may want to go without the rails if you're planning on using these bridge sections as more of a road, but I prefer to leave them in place because I have a nasty habit of taking precipitous falls off of very high objects when I'm trying to build things. Just keep in mind that when the bridge is at its standard size, those rails aren't incredibly effective at keeping you on the bridge. But once you've scaled it up a couple of sizes, it works just fine. The other special option these bridge styles have is called Short Bridge. And it does exactly what you would think it would do. It cuts the size of the bridge in half, at least as far as length is concerned. 
Now that can be very, very handy if you're trying to span a very small area or when you're trying to piece multiple bridge sections together in a certain way and keep the size of all of them uniform. Since I want to keep this bridge looking fairly modern looking to match the overall style of my observatory, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the stone and wooden bridge and we'll just go with the metal for right now. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the metal bridge as well and move it over. You've got to remember that if you have to make your bridge bigger overall, not only does it get longer, but it's also going to get wider. So it's always best to center it in the area that you want to attach it to. There, that looks just about right. I'm going to go ahead and place it here. And the next step is going to be, I think, to make it bigger right off the bat. And I'm not going to try and adjust it so much for size. I'm going to have to have multiple bridge sections to get all the way across anyway. But to establish a base size, I'm going to go ahead and make some major adjustments to get the width of the bridge just right to fill this gap in my railing. Okay, that'll do. You see how everything looks so much bigger now? Those railings are pretty massive. But they would come in handy if I were going to use this bridge to take large creatures back and forth. And of course I can get rid of them with just a click. Now it's time to go out to the end of the bridge and add some more identically sized sections to it to get the length necessary to get all the way across. But before I do that, well first we'll save this bridge configuration. Before I do that, I'm going to have to put some supports at the end of this bridge. We'll go ahead and put down a pillar so that I can add more sections to it. The advantage, of course, is that I don't have to use anywhere near as many pillars to get out this far. Fortunately, there are a couple of handy snap points out here at the end of the bridge. And you can snap pillars or ceilings or even ramps to them if you need to. Well, I'm sure you get the general idea. I'm not going to waste your time by making you watch me put pillars and the extra bridge sections in place. Instead, I'll just show you the finished product after we put a couple of foundations and a few ramps in place to make everything match up just perfectly. That was a rushed job, just for the purposes of this video. I had to angle the end of the bridge down just a little bit to make everything line up as well as it does, but I think it looks pretty good, and it only took me about five minutes to put it all together. Now if I leave this bridge here, I'll obviously go back in and add some more pillars to make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, but for the moment, I think it'll do. And there you have it. With a little careful planning and a few minutes of fairly precise work, we've ended up not only with a bridge, we've ended up with a mother beautiful bridge. I know I don't have to tell you just how much time and material using this mod has just saved me. I think that this very handy and useful mod by Dubcut deserves a place on almost any private server. And as a reminder, I will be putting a link to it in the description down below. One final note before I let you go. As you may have noticed, there has been a good size gap in my ARC videos over the last month. And part of the reason for that is, well, January is typically a very slow point in a YouTube channel's life, and it, it made for the best time for me to take a bit of a break after the holidays. I'm also delighted to say that during that time, my son, whom you may know as Vlad the Imploded, managed to find his way back home for a visit after an extended period wandering to the far corners of the globe in search of his law degree. I'm sorry, folks, but a man has to have his priorities. And finally, this break gave me the opportunity to do a few necessary upgrades to my audio, video, and software capabilities, most of which didn't make it into this video until the very end. Hopefully, they will contribute to higher quality offerings in the future. But most importantly, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to all my viewers, because without you, I wouldn't have been able to afford any of it. I can't tell you how much my family and I appreciate it. You have a good one, and until I see you again, good hunting.